Troll in the Dungeon! Greetings and welcome to another episode of Troll in the Dungeon. I am Simi Asinski, the Troll in the Dungeon. No, we are not going to run up previously on Troll in the Dungeon because, well, I don't want to. And that gives my editor more work to do and, frankly, he's overtaxed as it is. He has to deal with my nonsense every day. Okay, sorry. So we're going to go back to continue. Uh, actually, we're going to round out the uh, retro review of Harry Potter film franchise. We're going to do Deathly Hallows Part 2. So there was a lot to going on that needed to end the franchise. We had a lot of storylines to wrap up. I mean, we had the big main arc of Harry versus Voldemort, but we also had Hogwarts basically under siege by the... Death Eaters, we had um, our three main heroes kind of trying to make their way through and destroy the Horcruxes and such on their grand quest. And we had this weird mirror thing going on that apparently uh, Kyrian Hines is involved in. Who knows what's going on with him. But then again, he's Steppenwolf and he's fantastic. The, the real one, the Zack Snyder version, not that... P.O.S. that Joss Whedon did, but you can reference my uh, other show that I did many a year ago. Maybe it's on YouTube or Instagram somewhere. I don't know. Anyhow, so this is part two. We did a lot of work on part one. The, the film was longer, but this one is actually one of the shorter films of the whole franchise. But it did a, actually an overall decent job of wrapping everything up, and uh, overall I enjoyed it. So uh, we got introduced to Kyrian Hines as Aberforth Dumbledore, a.k.a. Albus's brother. And he did a good job. Apparently they did a little bit of makeup on him to look, make him resemble Michael Gambone a little bit more. And I believe it, and uh, Kieran Hines himself is a fantastic actor in his own right. Uh, check him out in Silence um, by Martin Scorsese. He's actually pretty good in that. He doesn't have a huge amount of screen time, but he, he's very good in that. And a few other great actors in that film. Overall, as I said, the film was good. The special effects were um, excellent. Uh, got to see uh, Neville, Matthew Lewis, uh, kick some ass and slice off some snake heads, and that was one of the best parts of the movie because I hate snakes. They terrify the piss out of me. So, not gonna lie, it made me happy seeing a headless snake. Um, let's see. Got some other uh, heroes coming in, kicking some ass, and uh, some silly reunions. It really, the, I, I could go on and on about the Jimmy, Harry, relationship that just is so piss poorly written. Roll the clip. Okay, sorry. You have no idea how much I want to do that to Steve Close and David Yates on a regular basis whenever I watch this franchise. I really do. But anyway. <clears throat> Overall, and there was some interesting stuff in there. But as I said, this film ended the franchise very nicely. And although that um, epilogue scene was a little rough on the eyes, honestly, they could have done better with aging the actors and such. And <laughs> there was the 20th anniversary uh, special that HBO Max put out. And <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe joked that they looked better then than they actually did in the fake 20 years later, or whatever, and... He's not wrong! They aged him... Uh, they aged a lot better in real life than they did. Um, yeah, just give Harry a beard or something. Just do something. But don't do the beard that Caviezel got in, uh... One Hour Photo... It wasn't One Hour Photo. Oh, uh, the final cut. Uh, just no. It doesn't look good. Don't do that to him. But just age the kids a little bit better. They looked better... <clears throat> so, yeah, that epilogue seems a little rough, and frankly, the source material could have used a little help, too, but I'm not going to go pick on J.K. Rowling right now. I may do it in the next video. We'll see. 
have fun with that. Anyhow, so we've got a lot of deaths in this movie because, well, it's the Battle of Hogwarts and the final battle of the Second Wizarding War and all that jazz. So here we go. Here's our deaths. We got Tonks. Sad. Remus Lupin. Sad. And by the way, where's Teddy? Okay. Although there's hints of Teddy existing because Tonks is wearing a maternity gown in part one. But still, where's Teddy? But they, I mean, damn Yates. Voldemort and Bellatrix Lestrange, not gonna lie. Molly Weasley going, not my daughter, you bitch. Uh, apparently it's Julie Walter's favorite line in the whole franchise, and frankly, it's, it's one of mine too. It makes me happy. And apparently there's some motivation as to why Molly decides to get off her keister kick some ass. And I'm okay about that. Eh, Snape. Everyone could go on and on and on about Snape's death. I'm not. Alan Rickman did an amazing performance, so I will give him that. It's not his fault that the source material is a little problematic. But Alan Rickman did an amazing job and also, really, you have her eyes. Really? 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 This is the last words you have when you die? <sighs> Don't worry. There's no alcohol in this. Even though I wish there was sometimes. Anyhow. Uh, the actually most tragic of all is freaking Fred Weasley dying. What nonsense. I get you had to kill one of the Weasleys because mathematically one of them has to bite the dust, but frankly, well, I'd be okay with Percy Weasley being off as the punts that he is, but you know, I know I shouldn't be wishing for someone's death, but they're a fictional character, so I don't feel too bad about it. He could have redeemed himself instead of being such a not nonsensical giant prick. I didn't write the books. I didn't write the movies. They should have let me. They would have been ten times better. I'm going to have some... Uh, I, I do have some questions for J.K. Rowling. Uh, I mean, Lavender Brown was looking like she wasn't looking too good. There was the possibility that she's dead. It's probably implied that she's dead in the movies. In the book, she said, it said that she was gravely injured, but that doesn't mean dead. So, uh, if J.K. and I ever get a sit-down... That's going to be one of the questions I'm going to ask. Along with 3,000 others, including... Why did you let Fred die? Why don't you kill Percy? He's ten times more useless. But he could have actually been a good literary device. But what do I know? <sighs> so, that ends our retro review. We have made it through this journey together. And I am so glad that you joined me. I actually, I don't care if you join me or not, if you watch the videos and enjoy them, awesome. And if you continue to like, subscribe, and uh, comment on the videos, I try to comment back to you. And sometimes my commentary is actually more witty than my actual videos. So you may get the luck of the draw. Sometimes you won't. Sometimes I just will be like, well, yeah, whatever. But still, like, comment, subscribe to our channel, so that way I can keep making this content for you. I'll be more motivated to, at least. And if you don't do anything, well, you're useless and get out of the way. So, at times I've enjoyed uh, doing this retro review, and I may consider doing another franchise at some point. There were other times I didn't enjoy this, the retro reviews. Go ahead and roll the clip. Hey, sorry. <laughs> okay, I enjoy, it. I enjoy it. I, having that in there just to keep me in good spirits. So, I hope you've enjoyed this. We have one more Harry Potter related video coming in. Um, by the way, there's plenty of Harry Potter material at our shop at Kaczynski Geekery. I suggest you go check it out. We have over 90 designs. There may be more by the time you see this. There probably will be more. But you should check it out. There's plenty of Harry Potter. We got some Star Wars. We got some Disney stuff. 
and some other related. Lord of the oh yeah, we have Lord of the Rings. Sorry, my producer was just uh, queuing me, and uh, a few other fandoms in there. And I'm trying to get more, but some fandoms are to whoever runs them are being a little persnickety, and a couple of them I can't blame them for being a little persnickety, and I'll allow it anyway. That's been this review. Be bold, be brave, be courageous. Ta-ta for now.